everyone, I'm Zoe B and welcome to this week's episode of Simple Life Strategies TV. Today I have with me Susan Pierce, Hay House co-author of the book One Moment Please. And today Susan is going to be sharing with us what the number one thing is that we are so starved of that it's costing us our happiness, our personal fulfillment and meaning in life. So stay tuned, get comfy and settle in for this week's episode of Simple Life Strategies TV. Welcome everybody. Today I've got with me Susan, who is the wonderful um, writer of One Moment Please, which is a wonderful book that I've just read. And we're going to get into um, some of the concepts behind this book today from lovely Susan Pierce and Martina Sheehan, who are the co-authors. And I thought we could get started, Susan, by... Um, just understanding what inspired you to write this book. Mm, very good question, because I think last time we spoke, it was around our first book, which was called Wide for Life, which was all around the fears that hold you back and mm. the solution to that being to come into the present moment because when you're living in the present moment, the fears don't exist. They tend to be really based in what we're you know, imagining in the future or we're holding on to in the past so this key of being in the present moment as a practical skill and the more we thought about it since writing that book it's the one thing the world is losing at the moment just that ability to be present and it was like everywhere we turned there were clients saying you know some days I feel like I'm losing my mind I can't remember things anymore I'm you know suffering from this like my head is jammed um, but even out observing things in children who had their heads down in iPads all the time, you know, parents watching sport with their head down in their mobiles. It just made us realise that really as a world we are losing that crucial ability to pay attention and it comes with so many negative consequences. Yeah, and I, you know, I completely resonate with you because, and you talk about this concept of busyness as well in the book and for me, sort of coming from corporate background and then, you know, doing my own thing, and, and getting on my own sort of personal growth journey, it, it kind of became all about productivity, using every minute, every second, you know, not, not wasting any time, but that's not actually that productive, is it? It's not, and the thing is, we are overloading our attention. Our attention is like a limited resource, it's so precious, and there is only so much we can give in a day, and I, we often talk about it, it's like you're given a bucket of attention to spend in one day, but most of the time we've got it leaking out the sides everywhere. The water's coming out of the bucket because we're wasting it on things that don't matter, that aren't really important to us, and then we've got nothing left to give to the things like productivity on a task that might, might be really important. So it's so important to fill that bucket up all the time, and I can totally relate to what you're saying with productivity. And you see that all the time when people are even doing things like waiting in a queue or waiting to get on public transport, the first thing they're doing is checking their email, probably from that same goal of productivity, but five minutes spent with empty space, just emptying out your mind, connecting to nature is way more productive than filling your brain with more things. Yes, yes, I completely agree with you. It's almost as if we've become really reactive rather than you know, planning out exactly how we're going to use our time. You know, we're just getting pulled in all these different directions. Absolutely. And I think we always say this saying of you're either in the driver's seat or you're being taken for a ride. And most of the time I think we're being taken for a ride because we're not in control. We're not making conscious choices about where to place our attention. Instead, we're just being distracted by the alert tone of the email or the phone ringing or the person that comes up to us with some drama and demanding our attention straight away. We are just, you know, at, at the whim of where our attention wants to go. And unfortunately, the research shows that the average person spends 47% of their time just totally lost in thought. And, you know, when you think about that, that's nearly half your life where you're not actually in control, you're being taken for a ride. Wow, that's a staggering figure. And what like, what do you think are the dangers of this? Like, what are the consequences? Yeah, I mean, there's the most obvious ones. Like, if you're not present when you're driving, more of a chance you're going to have an accident. <laughs> Just like if you're not present when you're cutting up the vegetables, more of a you know, chance that you're going to cut your fingers. But more so than that, I think people are really becoming disconnected 
from each other but also from their own lives yeah. because unless you are fully in the present in your own life, you could be having the most amazing experience but if you're not there for it, you're not going to have that level of meaning full happiness and I think that's what we're seeing. We're seeing stress rise, this whole lack of meaning that we're seeing in society is linked to the fact that rather than enjoying the sunset, we're actually caught up in our to-do list, we're rerunning the conversation that offended us yesterday, we're worrying about the thing that's happening tomorrow, we are not there enjoying those small moments and that's a problem. Yeah, completely. And it was, oh, do you know what really, it was quite funny but sad at the same time. One of the examples you gave in the book was um, I think there was some kind of thief in a store, a criminal in a store and, you know, he had a gun and he was, you know, trying to hold people at gunpoint but nobody noticed. Everybody was on their phones looking down. <laughs> Absolutely. That was in America just a few years ago where, um, you know, a gunman got on a train and there ended up being, you know, deadly consequences. But when they showed the CCTV footage, he had been waving the gun around the carriage and everyone had their heads down, caught up in their technology and no one even saw it. And I suppose that's the extreme of the consequences. And the other thing that we're seeing the rise of without getting too morbid here is, um, you know, the cases we've seen, there's been a couple in Australia, but certainly there's up to 30 a year in the States of people intending to drop their children at daycare and actually forgetting to do that, to only find in the afternoon the baby has been left in the car all day. And again, what we're talking about there is a lapse of attention. And whilst most of us pray that that would never happen to us, the same function in the brain is happening as when we run out and we forget our lunchbox or we're going to, you know, something today and we drive the wrong route because we're thinking we're going to the same place as yesterday. It's that same thing, you know, that's happening. But luckily for most of us, we're just experiencing those small consequences. Yeah, it's like we're completely, our brains are fried <laughs> from all of this, all of the distraction. And I mean, what, like you talk about attention grabbers in the book. So what, and it's interesting, I kind of, I like the way you approached it in that there's like physical attention grabbers, like, you know, digital technology, mobile phones, and then there's also the mental side of it. And there were seven that you talk through, like talk us through some of those different, so there's a the physical and then there's the, the yeah. mental. Sure. Because I think um, a lot of the time we can fall into the trap of blaming on technology because yeah. that's the obvious things that we see where people are in conversations, but they're checking their mobile phone. They're the obvious things. And really... When technology went mobile, it just opened up the floodgates because people have been training their brain to flick all over the place with technology, which means when they're even in a situation where they're not with technology, their brain is still flicking all over the place. Yeah. And we have 70,000 thoughts a day and they suggest up to 12,000 internal conversations, which is crazy. And most of those things are made up of things like um, just habits, you know, 95% of our thoughts are the same thoughts we had yesterday and these ruts just going on in our mind. Um, another attention grabber is the to-do list and it's not actually the list that's the problem, it's the fact that we can't let it go out of our head and, you know, often people's experience is when they wake up at the start of the day, it's straight to thinking, what do I have to do today? And, you know, getting into that doing as you were saying before, so that's, you know, an important one as well, but then we have just self-talk and there's positive and negative self-talk, but most of the time it's actually those labels we put on ourselves that hold us back, that I can't do this, that I'm not a very good whatever it might be, I'm this sort of person and again the self-talk, um, you know, captures a lot of, a lot of what's going on yeah. um, and fears of course is another big one all of the things that we're worried about failing we're worried about everyone looking at us about getting something wrong about not being in control and yeah it's these types of grabbers that are making up all of that internal chatter so even if we're in a conversation with someone and we're not flicking to our mobile phone you can always see that you know the eyes darting around and you know that someone's caught in their internal world of dialogue that's so interesting I hadn't thought about it that way in that we're actually creating new neural pathways, new habits through this kind of reactive and, you know, flicking between 
so many different things and yeah that makes sense so of course when we're not when there's not even a distraction there we're sort of automatically starting to behave in that way that's pretty scary it is scary because what yeah talking about really there is what we're losing is that basic skill of thought but we can jump in the driver's seat and get back in control and that's the skill at the bottom of this that we're really starting to lose as well yeah Mm. and um i love the way actually i'm just going to refer to Right. Look, there was a wonderful way that you um that you just that you explained this um the mental side of the distractions and you talked about um driving while well under the influence of worries <laughs> and we yes. or the endless to do list. I just thought that was so great, you know, because it really it goes to show, you know, the importance of our thoughts as well as all of these physical distractions that we've got going on, like the lit- little literal um, you know devices and what have you it's absolutely yeah. and i think um, one of those habits that a lot of people do driving on their way home from work is rerunning the day and that's another yeah. attention grabber about going over the day going over conversations things that you could have done better and really it is the same as we've outlawed things like texting while driving but you can get really distracted by some of that stuff as well and that's the they're the things that are less visible so you know there's probably harder to police Yes, definitely. I can see that. One of the other things that you talked about that um, really interested me, mainly because a lot of what I do is I help you know women to change careers and find more meaningful work, you, you kind of made this connection between having a purpose and attention and not being so me-focused. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Because when we tend to be having thoughts that lead to unhappiness, Mm -hmm. they are usually me-related thoughts. And we talk about, you know, attention can be grabbed by all those things, but what should we be giving our attention to? One of those is definitely the present moment. One of those is more positive thoughts because even for improving productivity, if we focus on more positive things, Mm -hmm. there's a link to being four times more productive. Being with people, again, is something that's good to give your attention to. But as you say, one of the biggest ones is actually purpose, that when we are giving our attention to how can I make a difference to the world or how can I make a difference to this person right in front of me, it takes you away from the me-related thoughts and purpose lights up your brain in amazing ways that are actually more powerful than money and all of those things that we think you know, turn us on. Yeah, and it is so powerful, isn't it? Because it kind of gets you out of this sort of egotistical, it is all about me. And we, you can get tunnel Sorry. vision almost, can't you? When you're, you're so focused on, on you and what you need. And, and as yeah. soon as you kind of open that to a bigger purpose, it also gives you that, that motivation as well. Absolutely. And to tell you the truth, it's a relief to take the attention off yourself. <laughs> I was just talking about this with someone this morning who was saying to me, you know, do you have you ever been really nervous about getting on stage and talking in front of big groups? And I said, well, no, because I never think it's about me. Mm-hmm. It's about a message that I want to give that will hopefully benefit people's lives. And when you take me out of the equation, it is a relief. But yeah, that's so interesting that you've said that. I actually asked that exact same question to a guy called Simon Reynolds. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a very successful businessman um, in the ad in the advertising world. Um, I think he sold some of his business for 30 million or something along those lines. But he, um, you know, did a lot of speaking and he said exactly the same thing. He said, the easiest way to eliminate nerves is to take the focus off you and think about what you're going to teach others and how you're going to help others rather than it being about, you know, how others are perceiving you. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, the trick with all the attention grabbers, take them away from the things that are meaningless and put your attention onto the things that are actually meaningful. And that's really important to get into the driver's seat and make conscious choices about those things. Yeah. And you know what? I've actually tried this out a little bit um, myself. I've tried even with people close to you. It's amazing. And you talk about this in the book about how, you know, kids will constantly, you know, they almost need more attention than anybody else as a part of their um, formative years. And if you just give someone, like you said in the book, a minute of your full undivided attention then it's like magic they you know the relationship that you have completely changes and they no longer are striving to to get something from you they feel like they've been heard it's really wonderful 
It's so true, and I think it's the first question we always get when we talk about mindful listening is people go, oh, I'm going to just be listening all day to my kids not get nothing done, <laughs> or, you know, to that annoying person in the office. But it's exactly as you say that the reason why people tend to go on and on is because they don't feel heard and that we can actually stop, give full attention just for a few moments, they're satisfied. They'll go away and do their thing, so that's definitely one to try. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. It really works. I tried it. I was quite because yeah. my husband, you know, he I'm so busy <laughs> working yeah. and doing things that sometimes he gets left out. And you know, it was interesting just to try it with him, just to yeah. give him my full undivided attention. And you know, he was you know happy as Larry after that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it left me to get on with whatever I was doing. It was great. Absolutely. And it's interesting, even um, some of the research in businesses talk about the importance of leaders giving attention to their staff. And there was an interesting study which revealed that employees would rather be picked on than annoyed than ignored so that's really how powerful attention is and that kind of explains why kids ramp up the naughty behavior to get attention because there is nothing that people want more than that moment of pure attention yeah it makes sense completely Mm -hmm. makes sense yeah Yeah. so what would you say are a couple of you know practical things that people watching could go away and do straight away to start you know paying attention themselves and, and getting that back. Yes, um, I think the most important thing is that we need to bring back the value of idle time. So create more empty space in our days instead of going to bed with your phone and you know it being the first thing that you grab when you open your eyes and already you're filling your attention with too too much that we need to just create these spaces of going, no, I'm going to lie in bed and I'm going to take a few breaths and I'm going to set a bit of an intention for the day. When I'm waiting for the public transport, resist the temptation to pull out the mobile phone or to start running through your to-do list Mm -hmm. and actually look up, connect with people, you know, have a look at the beautiful weather, whatever it might be, get more of that empty space throughout your day. And that acts like a little bit of a pause that, as I was saying before, even five minutes connecting with nature boosts productivity, it boosts memory, it boosts, you know, your immune system, all of these things. So bringing back idle time, resisting the urge to fill every moment with activity, whether that's mental or technology. And I think, again, it's just all themed around slowing things down. Our attention is now moving at a really fast pace. If I was to clap it, it would be like that. That's the pace that people's attention is moving at. It's not designed to move like that. It's designed to move at yeah. you know, that type of pace. So, you know, we often talk in Mind Gardener about half throttle, just moving down to being half thr- on half throttle, stopping multitasking, focusing on one thing, at a time, you'll actually find that you're a lot more productive, but also that what you're doing is a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. So just, yeah, bringing some of that stillness, slowing down mm-hmm. and really doing it moment to moment. And I guess that's why we called the book One Moment Please, because it's not about disappearing into a cave and meditating for however <laughs> long. It's just about finding the moments in your day where you can be more present. So I would suggest that everyone picks three moments where they're not putting their attention on what's really important to them Mm -hmm. and they tag those three moments and they start giving full attention, which might be when they wake up, when they're having a conversation with their husband and, you know, whatever, when they're on the bus on the way home, just picking your three moments and starting to give full attention. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. And I have to say I've noticed that as well, sort of, you know, coming from this very fast-paced sort of productive, obsessed person and, (laughs) And actually, you know, well, I had adrenal fatigue, so I was kind of forced to slow down. But what I noticed through that journey was when you slow down, you actually make better decisions. Um, And so because you're not sort of, you know, on this wheel trying to get everything done and everything's rushed and you go slower, you actually you do actually achieve more. And it's better quality as well, what you're actually doing. So it's really, yeah, I've noticed that myself, too. So I completely get where you're coming from. Um, So. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's a real mistake to think that slowing down means less productivity because it's exactly as you say, it means less mistakes, better decisions, better ability to pick out the 
Ority, um, better ability to see the people in front of you and connect with them that can help achieve some of your goals. So you really will achieve more doing less. Yes. Yes, and a great note to, to wrap up our chat, Susan. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you, everybody, for watching as well. Um, so this is the book, One Moment, Please. Wonderful, wonderful book, and people can probably find out more about this from your website. Is that right, Susan? Yes, on our website, mindgardener.com, but also it's available on Amazon and all of the online book retailers as well as bookstores. Yes, and all good bookstores. Yeah, all good bookstores. <laughs> as they say. Yeah, really, really important message, guys. So do go out and get a copy. It will, it will actually change your life, you know, and, and slow things down for you, and you'll be more productive than ever. So do check that out. Well, thank you again, Susan. It's been wonderful, and thank you everybody for watching. I'd love to hear from um, all of the viewers at home what things have been stealing your attention. What attention grabbers have you come into contact with? Do leave us a comment um, beneath the video here. And if you do want to hear from me more regularly, go over to simplelifestrategies.com where you can sign up for regular email updates and lots of free goodies from me. So that's it for today, guys. Um, it's been wonderful um, to be here with you today, and I will catch you next time on Simple Life Strategies TV.